So last week on November 15th, that's when Sony officially announced that they weren't going to be at E3 2019. Of course, this was big news, but a lot of the internet seemed to miss that one person on Reddit actually leaked that information out one day prior to that, which now leads us to look at this one user's particular profile and looking at all of their previous posts about what they've been saying in regards to PlayStation 5 and Sony's next generation plans. And now we can start to see what's going on here. And that's where this video comes in. And before we get into the minutia of this video, I want to make it perfectly clear this is a rumor because this is actually focusing on one user in particular on Reddit. And normally I wouldn't do something like that. Typically I like to make sure that I have uh, various sources, uh, things that are going around in the games industry before I try and post a video that's going to go out to potentially tens of thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, that are I don't want to spread misinformation certainly but heavy rumors that have a lot of sources behind it at the very least we can sort of speculate there and that's what we did with my last PlayStation 5 video where we kind of rounded up all the rumors regarding PlayStation 5 but what is so particular about this one reddit user Ruth Nick Cookie he definitely got this one 100% correct this was not guessed or BS in any way shape or form so now um, the internet has kind of looked a little bit into his posts and I myself have looked into his posts to see what he's saying in regards to Sony's next generation console. And you'll be surprised to see the parallels of the rumors that we talked about about five or six months ago in regards to PlayStation 5. A lot of these are still very true. Some of them are a little iffy and I'm not totally ready to believe them just yet. But anyway, let's get into every single post he made about next gen. So starting off in regards to Sony's plans for 2019, he said PlayStation Experience will be returning in 2019. He said most developers already have dev kits for PlayStation 5. He said PlayStation 5 is a monster, 4K 60 frames per second stable. In relation to E3, he said Sony is prepping hard for PS5, and one of the main reasons for no E3 next year is because they blew all their load this year and they have nothing new to show next year. They want to show the new stuff at PSX. When somebody asked about the PlayStation 5 reveal, he responded saying that there will be a small reveal in mid-2019 with a big one at PSX, those plans might change. And again, responding to this, he said, remember the very first PS4 reveal? Something like that. But hey, then again, plans might change. He said the announcement is in one year and the release is one and a half to two years. He said PlayStation 5 is coming soon because Anthem is being tested on one of the dev kits. It's coming in the next one to one and a half years and boy, it's a beast. In response to the PS5 2019 announcement, killing holiday 2019 PS4 sales in theory, he says, well, they're almost at 100 million. It's already ascendant immortality in Sony's eyes. In response to Death Stranding and The Last of Us Part 2 possibly being on PS4 and PS5 at the same time, he said, mostly on both, but obviously going to be made for the PS5. He said, obviously made for PS5. Most developers already have the dev kits for PS5, and from what I've heard, EA is testing Anthem on it. Anthem is a mess on this current generation of consoles, and it is probably going to get delayed again. He said The Last of Us Part 2 and Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima will be PS5 launch titles. He said he can't say for sure about Ghost of Tsushima and Death Stranding is still in polishing stages. And so he doesn't want to make them PS5 exclusives because they were advertised as PS4 games right off the bat initially. He said, but then again, all three games have no official release date and no pre-order plans. So anything is subject to change. Red Dead Redemption 2 will be ported to PS5 in March 2020 apparently. Uh, he's only confirming the port, not necessarily the date. He said PS5 will release either March or November 2020. It's coming out in 2020. They want to hit March 2020, but apparently it might be pushed into November. And then in regards to the internals, he said, One thing I can tell you right now is the specs is the Ryzen 8 core. Price $500. PlayStation VR 2, on the other hand, will have no breaker box this time around. and It'll be inside the box. And then responding to the VR questions, it's a better controller for VR tracking. He said that there's going to be a camera in the DualShock 5. There's going to be new PlayStation Move controllers. They're also testing some gloves to go with virtual reality as well. Then somebody asked about Ape Escape 4, and he said confirmed. <laughs> so there you go there. Uh, responding to Bloodborne 2, he said, As much as I would love to do that, it's not happening anytime soon. In regards to backwards compatibility, this one was interesting because a lot of users were of course asking about backwards compatibility and he ignored many of those posts. Basically when he finally responded he said he doesn't want to give unconfirmed information. The only thing I know is this. Most of the late PS4 titles will also be on PS5. That's essentially all of the posts he made. And if we kind of round all of those up together and reflect on those from the video I made about five, six months ago. A lot of what he said there does ring true with that video, which is that Sony's going with uh, a Ryzen 8 core. 
uh, the PlayStation VR breakout box is now going to be baked into the platform itself. Of course, a 2020 release, although I think a lot of people at this point really kind of agree that we could see the console release in 2020 with an announcement in 2019. But once again, just another sort of source being added to the previous rumors we've already had for about half a year. Developers having dev kits already, of course, they kind of need them that far in advance to meet hardware launches, so not entirely surprising. But Sony's plans for 2019 in general seem to line up very well, especially given that they've canceled their E3 2019. That's what we talked about in Let's Talk PlayStation just a few days ago on Friday. And that was my initial gut reaction, which is that we saw this a year ago, essentially, saying, well, Sony blew their load. And that's exactly what he's saying word for word, which is that Sony's already shown off all the late PlayStation 4 games being released, and we know what most developers are doing. The other ones that we don't know, obviously working on PlayStation 5 titles, more than likely. Um, confirming Ape Escape 4 just loosely, I don't know if that was either a joke or... But once again, considering the track record of nailing the E3 prediction, take that for what you will. The VR stuff really fascinates me because Sony's going to really go hard on virtual reality on PlayStation 5, and I think a Gen 2 version of VR is what people really need to see it flourish and really be what it could be, right? We always talk about that where VR is kind of a gateway thing right now where you try these small experiences and you really enjoy it, but at the same time you think, ah, but it's just, it's so much of a hassle to pull out. It's uh, a little blurry for some people. There's motion sickness. Uh, the controllers and peripherals that are available right now, they're fine, but they don't really get the job done. And when you see another iteration of the device, you can see a lot of those things get solved here. And now you're seeing the breakout box being put in every single PlayStation 5. You are seeing possibly a new glove peripheral, which we can already, I you know, dream about um, the use cases for that in a game that would make it so much uh, more uh, compelling and uh, immersive. The new move controllers, I think it's quite obvious that we need those. We've been using Sony's still using these same move controllers from the PlayStation 3, well over what seven, eight, nine years ago now. It came out. Yeah, PlayStation Move came out in 2000, well, it was revealed 2009, if I'm not mis mistaken, then released several months after that, or 2010. Sorry, I'm doing this off the top of my head. But the two big standouts for me is price and backwards compatibility. Price being $500. I'm finding it really hard to believe that Sony's going to sell a $500 box, given how well they did with a $400 PlayStation 4, and that was learning not to ever sell a five six hundred dollar machine from playstation 3 how could they possibly do that again do you know what i mean and i understand that they're baking a lot into the hardware so i could certainly see it costing five hundred dollars assuming you're going to have a dualshock 5 with a camera sensor on it you're going to have the breakout box baked into the platform you're going to have the ryzen 8 core in there this thing's going to try and hit a stable 4k 60 frames per second on a lot of titles and of course that's discretionary because most developers will still almost always try to push graphical fidelity over a constant frame rate and resolution they almost always sacrifice a frame rate or resolution to increase graphical fidelity um, in some way, shape, or form. And this is something that, at not lying to you here, developers do this. It's just part of the game's industry. So uh, that's a little bit discretionary, but still, it's going to be a very powerful box. So I can certainly see it hitting 500. My thing is, I don't know how Sony could possibly do that this time around. And with backwards compatibility, we've talked about this a lot, which is that PS4 and PS4 Pro, Xbox One, Xbox One X, those that is like the um our little sample test of understanding that okay they're going with x86 now we should be moving on to a forward compatibility scenario here when he says maybe just late ps4 titles and kind of dodging the question that really worries me because for the love of god sony don't mess this up this is it, it this is what everybody's been looking at and understanding i mean what does this mean exactly i my initial thought was late ps4 titles does this mean there's like a cutoff of like titles that were officially supported from ps4 pro onward so necessarily playstation 4 games would you know it would play ps4 games but ps4 games that were mandated at that point to have pro support is there something in the code in in, in the development of games at that point forward of late 2016 when sony mandated developers support ps4 pro is that sort of the cutoff point where a PlayStation 5 could understand and read PlayStation 4 games and anything prior to that those games just weren't made in that sort of scenario where they can now be read further. You know what I mean? I understand it gets a little um, a little iffy to understand but 
uh, you have to look at it from the development point of view, and uh, that's where it can be a little bit of a gray area. When you're playing something like Killzone Shadowfall on a PS4 Pro, that game's not supported. PS4 Pro then has the boost mode to kind of possibly retroactively get a little bit of an extra performance out of the game. I still <laughs> wish this would be a full-on scenario where a PlayStation 5 can properly play PS4 games and there would be no major issue what whatsoever. Then again, this is Sony and they do make really dumb decisions. So those two big ones really scare me is the price and backwards compatibility. Um, if you nail a good price point and you say, hey, your PS4 library is safe, I think there's not much else Sony could really mess up to convince people, oh my god, this is a great platform to buy into. Anyway, the video is getting a little long. That's some PlayStation 5 speculation from one particular person that seemed to get that one thing down perfectly. So you, you have to assume he's getting very credible information, and that's what I found fascinating about it, especially given the parallels between the rumors we've, we've known for a half a year now and what he's saying today. So that's it for now. You're updated on the latest PlayStation 5 news and rumors, and if you haven't yet, stay subscribed to the channel for the best PlayStation news reviews and updates here on YouTube. That's it for me in this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy.